Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video lecture, I'm going to talk about how you can solve UGC Net English Paper 2 in the best possible manner and how you can maximize your score. So we'll be talking about how you need to solve the question, what is the paper pattern, how you need to gradually move from one question to other, what are the things that you need to keep in mind while you are solving MCQs. But before we do that, I would like to tell you that Two things are very important when it comes to solving a MCQ paper. The first thing is your pre-existing knowledge. Whenever you're solving any MCQ paper, you need to have pre-existing knowledge. You need to know the paper well. You need to know the syllabus well because no cheat codes, no tips, no quick revision strategy will work unless and until you have not worked hard. Number two, the paper solving will also depend upon the difficulty of paper. If the paper is difficult, the things that I'm going to talk about in this video lecture might not work. If the paper is easy, the things might work very well, but it will totally depend upon the difficulty level of the paper. But if the paper is of moderate difficulty level, as we have seen in the uh, previous five years, in that case, these tips are tested because I myself have applied it. I have talked to several experts and on the basis of their experience, on the basis of their learning, I'm telling you these things. So let's begin. The first thing that you need to keep in mind whenever you are looking at a paper of UGC Net English, you need to first categorize this entire paper in three segments. There would be 50% questions that you will be 100% sure about. If you have prepared thoroughly, then from the paper, you can definitely take up a section of 50%, which you know 100%. The next section will be of 30% questions, which you are not very sure about. There comes the need of educated guesses. Okay, you might have heard about those writers, you might have heard about the works, but you might not know the actual answer. And the third set of question is forms the 20% uh, part of the paper. And these 20% questions are questions you might never come across while you are preparing for these exams because the paper is designed in such a manner that you're not able to score more than 70 to 80 percent because what happens is that whenever you're preparing for any of these exams if a person uh, who teaches such exam himself sits for the paper and finds that he is not able to score more than 70 80 percent that means the difficulty level of the paper is such that nobody can score more than 80 percent okay so you need to keep this in mind that you need to chart out the questions in such a manner that there would be 50 percent questions that i will be completely sure about there would be next 30 percent questions which i might need to work more and i might need to uh, work towards educated guests and then there will be 20% question which I might find totally alien because when I started with my UGC net preparation I did this big blunder I am a perfectionist by birth so I had this thing in my mind that I will prepare in such a manner that I'll be able to solve 100% paper I'll be able to mark all the questions correctly but when uh, I started solving the previous year papers, I found that the difficulty level is such that even if I try my best, I cannot score more than 80-85%. Okay, that is because the paper pattern is made in such a manner. So, when we have unrealistic expectations from ourselves, we panic when such situation comes. That is when if you are thinking that you will be able to score 100%, you sit in the exam hall and you might come across five questions you are not at all aware about. That is the moment you will have a panic attack. So it's always better to know the paper pattern before approaching the exam hall so that you are aware that okay, even if you encounter few questions which you are not sure about, you know that this is how the paper is set. There will be questions I will be sure about. There will be questions which I might not have any idea about and there will be questions on which I need to work on. So this is how the paper is set. Now let's take up these questions one by one and see how to solve such kind of questions. So now once you have got the question paper in your hand, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to start reading from question number one and just keep on marking the right answer of all the questions that you are 100% sure about. So you need to first attempt the 50% chunk of the paper which you are 100% sure about. It might vary according to the difficulty of paper. If the paper is very difficult, you might not be able to attempt more than 30-35% questions with surety. Okay, so first attempt 
whatever questions you are sure about first attempt those question in the question paper so that it will help you in two ways number one it will boost your confidence because if you directly jump into questions you don't know your confidence will zero down and once your confidence is gone then you might not be able to think about questions that you might have answered correctly when you were confident about your own self second important thing that you will be uh, sure about when you solve this chunk that you that these many questions i know so you know that you have already completed 50% of the challenge you know 50% of the uh, questions and you have answered it now you don't need to look at those questions again now your entire energy will be focused on the rest 50% of the paper on which you need to devote your time into if you are a Sherlock Holmes fan just like I am, you must have come across this statement by Sir Arthur Conal Doyle where he says that when you have removed the impossible, then whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And this is how you need to solve the next 30% chunk of your paper which will fall under the category of guesswork or educated guesses as it is commonly known as. See, the best way to solve questions whose answer you're not sure of is through elimination. And this is what Arthur Conal Doyle is saying in these lines, that whenever you strike out all the options which is not correct, you strike out all the options which you think are not correct, in that case, what remains is the truth. So this is the method of elimination which you can use in order to solve the rest 30% questions which you can see and see and see where you know where you know where you know if you put a little you might come up with the answer. How to do this? Let me tell you with an example. Suppose you come up with a question and it has four options. Now first of all put your energy, put entire focus of yours in knowing that out of these four which are not correct at all you might come up with at least two options which are not correct so just strike those two options now your energy will be on the options that are there on the sheet of paper and you know that out of these two there is one correct and one wrong answer and also it will help you in um, increasing the probability of getting a right answer because what happens is that if out of these four options you are putting a mark on one answer the probability of that mark being correct is 25 percent but on the other hand if you have already removed two options and you have two options the probability of getting a correct answer is 50 percent so probability also increases plus your focus is removed from the two wrong options you don't need to think about it anymore just read the question and keep thinking about the two options and try to find the link that how can these two options be related to the question which is mentioned above so this is how you work out and this is how you come up with a correct answer and this is the strategy which is used in almost all competitive exams and it is the most tested way to get the right answer now let's talk about the last step or the last set of questions that you need to tackle in any exam. The last set of questions are questions which you have no idea about. Now students ask me that how to solve such questions. See, there was a book I read a few days back. Uh, the book was written by Barbara Oakley and the name of the book is Mind for Numbers. In that book, she has written a very profound statement that whenever our mind encounters a difficult statement or a difficult problem, our mind continuously keeps on thinking about that problem subconsciously. So if you look at the structure of the brain, you'll see that it is divided into two parts, subconscious and conscious. We, whatever I'm speaking right now, whatever you are listening right now, that is all the part of conscious activity. But suppose in the morning you came up with a question uh, which you were not able to answer. And that question is still in your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind, which is the most powerful machine of this world, is trying its best to come up with the answer of that question. And this happens in our day to day life. Sometimes we get a clue and we are able to solve that puzzle or we are able to solve that problem. The same thing happens whenever we are encountering any difficult problem. So whenever you face a difficult problem in your exam hall, whenever you find a difficult question which you are not able to answer, at that point don't keep on 
looking at that question don't keep on wasting time on that question read the question think about it for 20 seconds 30 seconds you're not able to come up with the answer move to the next question the data of that question has already been transported to your subconscious brain and your subconscious brain might come up with the right answer in next 20 or 30 minutes so this is how the process keeps on going don't waste your energy on looking at questions you are not sure about you don't know the answers for because the more you look at those questions the more you try to answer the more you are able to create tension in your brain solve the simple questions first then move on and with the method of elimination eliminate the incorrect options try to come up with a solution from those remaining options and try to get and reach to the conclusion in the third set of category, when we look at the questions which we have no idea about, read the question, think about it and then move to next question. Your subconscious brain will somehow give you the correct answer if it has any data related to it. So with that note, I would like to end this video. So I am pretty sure that if you follow the strategy that I have told you, you'll be able to get more marks, you'll be able to maximize your score and you'll be able to perform better than you performed if you did not follow this method because it will save a lot of your time. It will also help you to give your best during that two hours of your exam time because it's all about producing the best result during those two hours. You have prepared for that two hours a lot of nights you have spent a lot of days preparing for those two hours but if you are not able to plan those two hours properly the entire effort gets wasted. So Follow the strategy and let me know if you have any other questions in your mind related to the next net exam. You can put that in the comment section below. Apart from that, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because I am running this series for the next net exam and I'll be posting quick tips and strategy videos which can help you, which can boost your exam preparation and which can definitely help you if you are preparing for July's net exam because in those videos I'll be talking about things that you must remember when you are preparing for net and when you are sitting uh, to give the net exam. So those quick tips and tricks I'll be telling you in the next video lectures. So do subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on the social media platforms and do go and visit my website arpitakarva.com. There's a list of online course content which contains a list of 700 plus writers which must be studied by any student who is preparing for net exam. So if you too are preparing for net exam then go and visit that website and see the list of writers and start your preparation accordingly. So with that note I end this video. Thank you so much. Happy learning. Keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.